Did you know that the entire city of Chicago was raised by nearly 10 feet in the 1850s and 1860s to combat flooding problems? That's right folks, Chicago's inception is a tale of resilience and ingenuity. Imagine the colossal task of lifting an entire city, brick by brick, building by building, a feat so audacious it's hard to believe. Yet it was accomplished, and the Windy City was born, standing tall against the odds. But the trials didn't stop there. The Great Chicago Fire of 1871 was a disaster of epic proportions. It reduced much of the city to ashes, a devastating blow that could have been the end of this young city. Yet, Chicago didn't crumble. Instead, it used the tragedy as a stepping stone, rebuilding itself with a determination that was nothing short of inspiring. From the ashes of the fire, the city rose again, stronger and more beautiful than before. One of the few structures to survive the Great Chicago Fire was the Water Tower, a symbol of the city's resilience. This limestone sentinel standing at just over 150 feet tall has graced Chicago's skyline since the mid-19th century. Erected in 1869, the Water Tower was originally built to house a large water pump designed to draw water from Lake Michigan. When the Great Chicago Fire swept through the city in October of 1871, the water tower was one of the few buildings to withstand the inferno. The flames licked at its walls, but the sturdy limestone structure refused to succumb, standing firm amid the devastation. It's said that its survival was due in part to its water-filled interior, which kept the temperatures down while the city around it burned. In the wake of the fire, the water tower became a beacon of hope and resilience for the people of Chicago. It stood as a stark reminder of what had once been, and what could be again. As the city rebuilt, the water tower remained, a steadfast symbol of the city's strength and determination. Over the years the water tower has served various roles from a public works building to a gallery for local artists. Yet its most important role has always been as a symbol of Chicago's indomitable spirit. The water tower stands today, a testament to Chicago's resilience and the spirit of its people. In 1893, Chicago hosted the World's Columbian Exposition, a fair that would forever change the face of the city. Known more commonly as the 1893 World's Fair, this event was a grand spectacle that showcased the city's resilience and ambition a mere two decades after the Great Chicago Fire. The fair introduced many innovations and attractions that we take for granted today. One of the most iconic was the Ferris Wheel, an engineering marvel of the time designed by George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. Standing at a staggering 264 feet, it was an awe-inspiring sight that symbolized the city's rise from the ashes, but the fair was more than just a spectacle of innovation. It was a cultural phenomenon that left an indelible imprint on American society. The White City, as the fairgrounds were known, offered a vision of a future city, with grand neoclassical buildings and orderly landscaping. This vision influenced American architecture and urban planning for decades to come, pushing the country towards the City Beautiful movement. Moreover, the fair was a melting pot of cultures with exhibits from 46 nations. It offered Americans a glimpse of the wider world, and in doing so, it broadened their horizons and cultivated a sense of global awareness. The 1893 World's Fair was a turning point for Chicago, propelling it onto the world stage. In the 1920s and 1930s, Chicago was known for something entirely different, the mob, led by none other than Al Capone. This era, often referred to as the Roaring Twenties, was a time of prosperity and excess, but it also marked the rise of organized crime, with Chicago serving as its epicenter. Al Capone, often known as Scarface, was not just a gangster. He was a symbol of an age where lawlessness reigned supreme. Under his rule the mob controlled the Windy City, influencing everything from politics to law enforcement. Capone's empire was built on the illegal trade of alcohol during Prohibition, a period when the manufacture, sale and transportation of alcoholic beverages were banned nationwide. Capone was a paradox, he was a ruthless killer and a generous public figure. He orchestrated brutal acts such as the infamous St. Valentine's Day Massacre, yet was known to open soup kitchens during the Great Depression. He was feared and admired, reviled and respected, but the law finally caught up with Capone. In 1931, he was convicted of tax evasion and sent to Alcatraz, marking the beginning of the end for Chicago's mob era. The city was left scarred, its reputation tarnished, yet it was also the start of a new chapter. Despite the dark period of Capone's reign, 
Chicago emerged from this era with a new identity, forever shaped by its past. From the ashes of the mob era, Chicago rose, resilient and ready to redefine itself. From its inception, through fire and rebirth, a world fair and a notorious mob era, Chicago has undergone incredible transformations. This city, a beacon in the Midwest, has been shaped by its rich history, each era leaving an indelible mark on its character. The Great Chicago Fire, a catastrophic event that could have been the city's downfall, instead, steeled the resolve of its people. Out of the ashes, rose the iconic Water Tower, a symbol of resilience that still stands today. Then came the World's Fair of 1893. It was more than just an exposition, it was a turning point. It put Chicago on the global map, demonstrating its capacity for innovation and its willingness to embrace the future. It was here that the first Ferris wheel spun, captivating the world and cementing Chicago's place in history. The mob era, led by the infamous Al Capone, was a time of tumult and lawlessness. Yet even in this turbulent period, Chicago found a way to evolve, to adapt. The city's law enforcement developed new methods of investigation and prosecution, methods that are still in use today. These stories of Chicago are not just tales of the past. They are lessons for the future, reminders of the city's resilience and its ability to reinvent itself time and again. As we look at the skyline of Chicago today, remember the stories that built this city, the resilience that defines it, and the spirit that will carry it into the future.